This is not a real issue. It's just a culture war. The fight to retain trans rights in Missouri is uh, heating up or is as strong as ever. When Dr. L.J. Punch saw Jamie Reed's story, which we covered last week, and the affidavit she filed with Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey, he was unsympathetic. He wasn't uns unsympathetic to the cause of advocating for improved health care. The story sparked an investigation into the Washington University Transgender Center at St. Louis Children's Hospital and hurled um, many allegations against them, despite the fact that Reed is neither a caregiver or researcher involved with the hospital. I understand there are shortcomings in holistic care, Punch says. I'm not speaking without understanding that idea. Indeed, that's true on two fronts. Punch isn't just a physician. He's a member of the trans community. In 2019, Punch came out as non-binary. Then the next year, he came out as a transgender man, having sought healthcare, having sought out healthcare outside of Missouri to begin his transition. I understand being concerned being a concerned part of a healthcare system in which you are advocating for care that is not currently happening, Punch says, a genuine concern would have been presented in a way that was not so harmful. It goes against every concept of do no harm. Instead, Punch says, Reed's missive feels like it was purposely timed coming out as Republicans in the Missouri legislature are engaged in an all out war against the LGBT community, the all out war part, end quotes. Reed's pick of lawyers has also raised questions. One of them, Georgia attorney Vernadette Broyles, is founder of the Child and Parental Rights Campaign, which calls gender identity an artificial social construct. The other is Ernie Trakas, a Republican member of the St. Louis City uh, um, County Council. War seems an apt description of the efforts of, of Rabbi Daniel Boggard, who feels he's been fighting nearly every Tuesday at the legislative sessions that began in January. This year, there are at least 27 anti-LGBTQ bills in the legislature, more than any other state. Many of them target trans children, their parents, and their doctors. Boggart has a trans son, and he trudges down every Tuesday to Jefferson City with other parents, as well as religious leaders and trans children, to advocate for the rights only to see bill sponsors walk out before they testify, or as happened last week, for the advocates to not even be listened to at all. If politicians like Bailey and U.S. Senator Josh Hawley, who are publicizing Reed's allegations, truly cared about trans kids, they wouldn't want to hear from them and their, they would want to hear from, wouldn't they want to hear from them and their parents, Boggart asks. Every parent of, of a trans kid and every trans kid is asking them not to do this, begging them not to do this. And they don't even want to hear our, vo our voices, Boggart says. We don't want our legislature sitting in our doctor's offices. There is no world in which these people can be more concerned about the side effects of various medications or treatment than I am. This is not a real issue. It's just a culture war. Boggart says, they are terrorizing our families because they think it's good politics for them. I just really appreciated a lot of the quotes and that a lot of the way that uh, these two folks are, are pointing, uh, pointing out issues with the way trans people are being treated in the legislature.